Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about ink blending and the best inks to use to get the smoothest blend. If you've seen my video about Distress Oxide inks, you already know how much I love blending with them. I'll link it down in the YouTube description box below so you can check it out after this video. But there are lots of water reactive inks and inks that are great for blending out on the market. Today I'm going to compare and contrast a bunch of those different inks so you can decide which ones are best for you. So let's jump right in and take a look at all the inks that I'm going to compare today. Distress Oxide ink pads are felt pads, so they're strong and they don't indent when you press on them with your finger. The ink is a mixture of pigment and dye, so you can see it sits on my finger and is opaque, so it will sit on the paper as well. The Hero Arts Reactive inks are similar, felt pads and the ink sits on top as well and is described as a smooth blending ink which reacts when spritzed with water, allowing for creative water effects. The Atelier inks from Ink on 3 are called Artist Grade Fusion Ink and are foam pads that squish when pressed. The ink is very opaque and sits on your finger. It is described as able to use as watercolor, reactive, stamping, blending, layering, and mixed media. The Sukineko Versicolor pigment is also a foam pad and all opaque ink. This is the only ink I'm sharing today that is not meant to be water reactive, but it is a pure pigment. So two of these sets of inks have felt pads and two have foam pads. They all seem to be pretty opaque and thus should sit on top of the paper. So let's take a look at how they blend. First up, let's use my tried and true Distress Oxide inks. For all the blending that I'm doing today, I'm using Canson Bristol Smooth Paper and Tim Holtz Foam Blenders and my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat. The thing that I love about Distress Oxide inks is that they apply very smoothly and they blend very easily. I can pretty quickly get an opaque level of color and you can see how the pink and the yellow really blend together to create that line of orange in between. The Twisted Citron and Squeezed Lemonade blended out super smoothly with no lines at all. Once I was done blending, I spritzed water on the panel with the Distress Sprayer and then patted the water droplets with a dry microfiber towel. I love the look of the what they call the oxidized effect of how the distress oxides react with water and cause those white droplet areas. Now let's talk a little bit about Hero Arts reactive inks. Let's take a look at how easily the Hero Hues reactive inks blend. I have Lemon Drop, Key Lime Fizz, and Splash. I mainly bought these because I really love Hero Arts colors just like these. I could use bright colors like this all the time in all my card making. Plus, I wanted to see how they blended and reacted with water. I'm using the same blending tools with fresh foams, and I'm using the same paper. I was very happy with how the color looks and how smoothly it blended without harsh lines. I found the ink to be easy to apply, and you can see how easy it is to get a blend between the colors where they overlap. I can't get over these fresh bright colors that are seriously right up my alley and I think I may need to grab a few more of their reactive inks simply for the fact that the brightness of these colors really makes me happy. You can see they do blend together where the colors cross over. This is most evident between the blue and the green. You can see some texture from the paper showing through on the blue here and I'm not exactly sure why that is. Possibly the ink is sinking into the cardstock a bit rather than just fully sitting on top. But that's not as evident in the yellow-green blend, and it does mean that these inks are drying pretty quickly, which is nice. I spritzed the water on this panel and patted it dry again with the microfiber towel, and I'm super happy with how pretty those water droplets look and how well these inks react with water. Now let's take a look at Ink on 3's Atelier inks. I was really attracted to these inks because of their super bright rainbow of colors. 
Now let's take a look at the Atelier inks. These are bright, jewel-toned colors. They blend together very smoothly and easily. I was able to quickly get down lots of rich, opaque color onto the paper. The pads are nice and juicy, and the colors blend together really easily where they overlap. The one thing I will say is because the pads are foam rather than felt, you do have to be a little careful with them. I did nick up a couple of my pads by being a little too aggressive, trying to um, wipe one off that I had gotten some cross contamination onto. So just be a little more gentle with them than you would be with your felt pads. You can see how quickly I was able to get the purple ink onto the foam that had no color on it and how little I needed to re-ink the foam to get such a nice dark layer of color on the paper. Again, there is lots of texture from the paper that's visible, but the rich colors just can't be beat. I'm spritzing them with water again and patting it dry. These definitely react with water, but they don't create white spots. The droplets are just lighter colors of the color that they sit on. So it's a unique look, different than say the oxidation effect you get by spritzing the Distress Oxide panel. And so depending on the look that you want to create and the colors of ink that speak to you, you may want to check these Atelier inks out. Last but not least, we're going to take a look at Sukuneko's pigment inks. Pigment inks are not water reactive inks, but they are fully formulated to sit on top of the paper. You can see how completely the foam is covered by the Versicolor because it is sitting on top of the foam. You can use them on your waffle flower water media mat, but I was concerned that the pink especially might stain. And you can see that it is totally possible, especially if I didn't clean it up right away. If you want to avoid staining, you can use the Waffle Flower Palette Paper, which is a smooth, wax-free paper that fits right into the work surface of the mat. Of course, the paper does not stick to the palette paper the way it does to the silicone of the mat, but at least you can be sure that it won't get stained. These inks blend beautifully, and they create gorgeous combinations of colors where they overlap. I love these bright, fun colors and how creamy they are. There are no harsh lines and they're 100% opaque. The only downside is the dry time. You can see they stay really wet for a while. One benefit to that is that you can go in after creating your panel and add color to the areas that might be dry with using other inks. The downside is that if you want to continue to work with this panel, like die cutting it or stamping on it, you would definitely need to heat set it or set it aside for a long while to dry. Even though these are not technically water reactive inks, I did just want to follow the same process I did for the others. So I spritzed it with water and patted it dry. You can see there is some movement of the ink from the water, but nothing like the Hero Arts reactive inks. Definitely the dry time is something to consider with these. I did these two panels around the same time and the Hero Arts is definitely completely dry while the Versicolor is still super, super wet. Here you can see all four panels together. I think maybe I still feel like the smoothest blend is from the Distress Oxide ink, with Hero Arts being a close second. The richest colors were definitely the Atelier and Versicolor. The brightest water reaction came from both Oxides and Hero Arts reactive inks. The creamiest inks were probably the Versicolor, but they were also the longest dry time. I really think. All four panels are colorful and pretty, so it really depends on what you're looking for as far as colors available and water reaction. I really love using all these inks and they each have a place in my card making techniques. Which is your favorite? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you wanna see more about ink blending, check out these videos over here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. Until next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. I'm not distracted at all. Squirrel. <laughs> what was that?